And I feel like playing almost exclusively Ironclad has really helped me to focus in on some of the really effective strategies for this character and start to avoid some of the common pitfalls. Currently, my philosophy on this Ironclad on the Ironclad character is that your goal is sort of to survive long enough to become overpowered, basically. Ironclad has a pretty high baseline of power because of a high starting max health, constant healing from the burning blood, and a reasonably high damage output in the starting deck. Although I'd say overall Ironclad has one of the worst starting decks. Silence is worse, but uh, Defect and Watcher are definitely a better starter decks than Clad. But he's got enough just raw power and effective hit points to brute force his way through encounters that would leave the other characters dead. Erantan Lad. Did you hear about the clad who was put on trial? Fortunately, he had an ironclad alibi. Hey there, 039. Yes, I think boss swap is very effective, particularly on clad. Um, during our initial attempts to win streak, we saw some pretty good success with clicking the random boss relic button. Uh, lots of sneko eyes too, just pure luck there. I'll reiterate that I think boss swap in general is high risk, high reward, and is therefore very good in situations where you've got a lot of flexibility in your Act 1 pathing. If you can go lots of elites or no elites, worth considering, and I think it is actually worth considering here, as there is a no elite path here-ish. Um, that said, my eyes are actually being drawn towards choose a colorless card. Colorless cards are pretty decent on average, and I think they work better than average for the Ironclad, who can take advantage of the fact that most of them are either zero cost or, say, exhaust, many times both. Uh, and these can also really help you in the opening combats, which Ironclad does want help in. Those opening fights, uh, Jaw Worm, Slimes, Cultist, what have you, almost always do a bunch of damage to Clad that you're expected to heal from the Burning Blood. But if you can improve your outcome in those fights with something like a Swift Strike, uh, actually, tough choice here, Swift Strike, Flash of Steel. Nathas, thanks for the Prime sub and the five months. Probably I want to take a Flash of Steel here, huh? It's not as much damage, but we get the one card draw. So trade four damage for one card draw. That's probably worth it. And as we add strength, the Flash of Steel becomes better and better. Um, Flash of Steel also very notably potentially a component of an infinite combo for Clad, because Clad can exhaust all the other cards in his deck. So we pick up one drop kick and we have and one burning pact and we have a win con, right? That's kind of interesting. So all the more reason to take Flash of Steel over Swift Strike, I suppose. A couple more thank yous before we pick the Flash of Steel. Terrorish with a gifted sub. Nathas with the prime sub in the five months. Leaf Blade Fighter with four months. Happy New Year. Heck yeah. Floor one infinite. Let's do it. Is that gonna be a thing? I don't I don't think that's gonna be a thing. That would be more reason to. Remove cards early, potentially. Or as an Act 1 path goes, Fighting Guardian at the end, which encourages taking some block, maybe a little bit less offense than we normally would. Generally, I want to take as many Elites as I can, but I want at least one Rest Site before those Elites, so that they're easier to kill. Better if you can get the Chest before the Elite as well, which I think makes this Elite particularly easy as a target. You get a Fire and a Chest before the Elite here. This path is suicide. This is complete suicide right here. Never take this kind of path. You will die very fast. Four events into an elite. That's just that's just asking for pain. Koan, thanks for the three months. Don't really watch much Twitch, but you're very much a YouTube enjoyer. Glad to hear it. And Mick, thanks for 13 months. If there was a unique mechanical theme for the fifth character, what would I like to see that be? Um, a variation I've been asked off is on that is that if I was to add a character to the game, what would I make it do? And I would I would expand on the the sort of like havoc, war cry, headbutt interactions that Ironclad has, and I would I would make a character that cares about what the top card of the deck is a lot, like play the top card of your deck, then exhaust it, kind of like havoc or look at the top card of your deck, do something depending on how expensive it is, 
And then other cards that do stuff like put things on top of the deck. Yeah, there's a Packmaster pack that uh, does some things kind of like that. Be cool to see a whole character of 75 cards that's kind of based around that. Do I want to take one more combat before the shop? I can do three combats. Shop, hard pool. Hmm. Let's do that. Greetings, cultist. Since we have this flash of steel, we could do a little bit more damage. Four damage, zero energy when we draw it with Voln. And that can help chip away at the cultists. Make them a little bit easier to kill. If we play two strikes here. Pick one. Then we can heal for five, probably. Sure can. My my, what an interesting set of first options. All three of these are very good floor one picks for Ironclad. Shockwave is, of course, spectacular, applying weak and vuln to all enemies. Anger gives us another attack to play at zero cost, which is quite good. I like Anger a little bit less going into Guardian, but I think it's still pretty good. Metallicize, block per turn. Quite powerful, actually, defensively. And yeah, uh, even better against the Guardian, where you're going to want that block every single turn. Clam Bandit with the Prime Sub, thank you for 12 months. Zavern with the 10 months. Happy New Year to you. Could reasonably see taking any of these. Anger will do well against early elites, being a zero cost attack. Shockwave is great for applying weakness and vulnerable to any elite. Metallicize helps a lot defensively, again, against really any elite, including Gremlin Ob. I think I'm going to go with the Shockwave, but I'm actually. I, I think I would do Shockwave first. Metella's size second, Anger third here, but those are all pretty close, and then Skip is a very distant fourth. Let's go Shockwave. Already, I kind of like it, because it's blocking three here. Against the Jaworm. Great fight. We're at full health. Exactly what I mentioned might happen as a result of taking the colorless card. Oh, man. French Fry Apocalypse, thanks for the 17 months. Everyone's favorite game of 2023? For me, it was a toss-up between um, Baldur's Gate 3 and Armored Core 6. I both really enjoyed those. Too soon, they say. It's never too soon. Never too soon. Banished Radish, thanks for the five months. Clown held the door for you the other day, and you thought, what a nice jester. It's a great one. I think Dark Embrace is a very spectacular card on Clad. One of the legendary combo pieces that can bring this character to new heights, although sometimes it is a brick in your hand, like right now. What a shame, this draw. Basically any... I guess there's two more strikes we could have drawn. It's the fourth card here. So it goes. Ouch, my face. Carnage seems pretty good here. Two cost, 20 damage, and it says exhaust if you don't play it. Which means with Dark Embrace, it will draw a card when not played. Flavio, thanks for this three months in the Prime Sub. Yeah, I, I think it's not too early for Dark Embrace, especially with the Shockwave Flash of Steel already. Um, and we, if we face the Three Centuries Elite in Act 1, that will also reward us. Oh my good lord. All right. Um, probably buy Trugit also. Wow, this is off to a great start. Yeah, I'll buy this True Grit, too. I didn't play either of those on stream, no. <laughs> I'm really picky about what I play on stream. Very, very picky.
to kill this guy soon, so let's flank Carnage, take one more. We need, to, need him to perish on this turn. Okay, so far things are going quite well. We definitely have enough strength to fight some elites here. I guess our best upgrade is probably the Immolate to make it 28 damage to every foe here. Metallicize is back and we're allowed to pick it or we can take a Pummel Strike. I actually really like this Metallicize. Let's do it. Library FTW, thanks for 18 months. This run looks exhausting so far. <laughs> Time to smash. If you're strong, take advantage of that strength to get more strong for later in the run. Kind of the goal here. If we play Bash Strike over Carnage here, I mean, it's only... We do Carnage Strike for 26, but I don't get the Volm. I want that Volm. Immolate Plus will do all the damage here, hopefully. Ooh. It's not good really bad, actually. That means we're never killing him next turn. Oot. Looks like we're losing a bunch of health here. But how much health is the question? Not too much, as I can play Shockwave Metallicize. Although, we gotta do some math here. This does 42 damage. If I deal 9, he's already dead next turn, guaranteed. I would like to guarantee that. Although, we're very likely to draw another attack here. So I could save potentially, what, three health off Metallicize? That's not worth it. At the risk of brick. Because we could have drawn Defend, Defend, Defend here, for example. And then we would have been taking another 20 damage. We get an early shovel here. The shovel lets us, instead of resting or upgrading at a campsite, dig to get a new relic. Which is questionable. And we see a second win, which is also normally kind of questionable, but when you have a Dark Embrace, is just amazing. You get to exhaust all non-attack cards in your hand, getting a block for each one. I have a couple upgrades I need to do before we even think about digging. I'm going to upgrade True Grid first, at minimum here. Especially with the Dark Embrace, we want to be able to reliably exhaust specific cards. How do I feel about hit points? I like hit points in this position, and I'm not going to take the blue key over this. I'd say Strawberry is one of the relics that's about as close to being equal to the blue key as possible, so it's, it's really almost a coin flip here, whether you want to take this or not, usually. I feel like we want hit points a bit more than usual here. We're not fighting Hexaghost. I don't feel that strong for Act 2 yet. We still need a power throw to really uh, put the combo together. Don't have an Evolve or anything. Mojira, thanks for the 17 months, almost to one and a half years. Might be Shockwave Metallicize. If I play Shockwave, then they... The front and back ones die instantly upon playing Immolate. It's pretty valuable. And Metallicize will block the most overall. Let's do that. Take seven on turn one. That's what the Strawberry gave us. If we're lucky, we draw Immolate right now. That'd be very nice. We did not do that. Okay, we got True Grit, though. That helps quite a bit. Um, and I'm going to play True Grit, then Dark Embrace. I don't want to go Dark Embrace, True Grit, because that has a chance of drawing the Immolate, and then all is lost. Um, but I want to be able to play Second Wind if we don't draw the Immolate, and then draw the Immolate and kill them all. So we go True Grit first, Dark Embrace second here. We draw the Immolate. Boom. Get wrecked. All right, we get an oddly smooth stone, a very good find here. Plus one dex means all of our blocks are just a bit blockier, notably the second wind in True Grit, especially. Block potion's pretty good. The Shrug It Off says block for nine, draw a card. I like that. I like that quite a lot. Might be a little bit too much defense, not enough offense. We have a thorn spot for the Guardian, though. 
I'll take it. Good evening, Annibal, and Happy New Year. Chubbs with the six months. Oh, no. You'll get that two in a row, uh, Chubbs. Keep at it. Keep at it. And yes, that was a pretty good spot weakness as well. I don't like the spot weakness that much, because currently our main damage sources are big, heavy-hitting cards that don't benefit much of, from strength, but the Flash of Steel sure does. That spot weakness would have been good against Guardian. If we see another strength source, an inflame, or a spot weakness, I'll be taking it. Uh-oh. Double Sneaky Gremlin and Wizard. We really want to draw towards that Immolate here. Problem is... Not a guarantee. Might have to kill the Wizard next. It depends on the card draws here. And where the shield goes, too. Oh, good. We got the Immolate. So that'll kill the Wizard and the Shield Gremlin... She kills everybody. Even better. Oh. Well. I guess I'll take another one. Second true good's pretty good there too, but I think the second second wind, the third wind, if you will, is even better. Theoretically. <laughs> Hello? Alright, I got a block potion. I'll just use it. That's fine. But what happened to Clash? New year, new streak. How's it going, Tapqua? Hope it's so. And th thanks for 22 months, X of Geese. I, I hope we see an Elden Ring DLC this year. Anything later would be, quite frankly, too long. What is my favorite color? Blue. Various shades of blue. Let's see, we're fine against Guardian. Uh, it would be nice to get more cards, but I'd rather get upgraded cards. Alternately, I'd rather fight an extra elite and get an additional relic. There he is. I want that relic, dang it. I could fight for Essence of Steel. Think on that. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Well, that's not good. Definitely not the draw order we wanted here. Could play the second win, but I don't think it's a good idea here. Gonna play Immolate. And yes, I need some hit points here. At least we draw a bunch on this turn. Then. Okay, we should be able to immolate safely next turn, provided True Grit doesn't draw it here. Good. Ow. Excellent. Full block, we play immolate, we should kill next turn. Okay, that was a much spicier fight than I expected. However, our rewards are... Boy Ornithopter, which is effectively 10 hit points back because we have two potions. And could take one of these if we wanted. We don't need to. Is Knob's pattern always the same? On the highest Ascension levels, yes. Um, that's Ascension 18 and up. If you're below Ascension 18, he actually has some randomness to him. And he may use either his lower damage and vulnerable adding attack or his higher base damage with no vulnerable attack interchangeably. Hmm. 
Take armament so that we can try digging. That's an idea. I might be digging anyway. Although upgrading Dark Embrace is very tempting. Lice Phoenix, thank you much, so much for very generous five gifted subs. Yeah, exactly. Arma Act 1, usually tempting, but we've already got so much block that I'm not sure we want more. We've already got too many cards as well. Normally I say add about five cards in Act 1. We've added uh, ten. Although a lot of it is card draw. What year was my first Souls game? Uh, Demon Souls 2006? 2007? Not sure when that came out. Demon Souls on the PS3. Very much enjoyed it. It was 2009. Okay. Yeah. Uh, wrong on the year. Sorry. It was a long time ago. <laughs> I didn't even want to think about that. Not so bad, Andy. Thanks for the 100 bits. Your first two runs of the year were a silent 820 heart kill and a watcher run that died at the heart with the heart at only 8 health. Oh my. Yeah, I can't really get more OG than that without going uh, Kingsfield games, which which I have not played. I have not played. I have the OG cred when it comes to armored core games, though. Mostly. Uh-oh. Is this my explosive pot? Sure looks like it's going to be. Save so much health here. Let's just do it. Worth it. Oh, super worth it. Now we have a fairy. And probably don't want to double tap. Although double tap maybe with Carnage and Emily? Maybe. And two second wins. And Flash of Steel. It's an infinite combo. Okay, let's go. It's actually not without a sundial. It's not, I guess. Did I play Armored Core 6? I did. I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, now that I think about it, I actually do want this double tap. Um, That would be a reasonable upgrade, although not without more energy. Let's just dig. Okay. That's pretty funny. Tatsunoko, thanks for the five months of support. So, when we don't dig, we heal more. Fluffy Mitten says, felt to you like a PS2 game in structure, although certainly not spectacle. That also makes sense, given that the series, most of the main series was on PS2. So it is the continuation of a, a series that nominally was PS2 games, and therefore they got the mission structure. It's actually something I really admired about AC6. The, the mission structure and sort of small operating zones was originally a hardware limitation of the PlayStation console. They were able to do a lot bigger missions and much more interesting environments because of the, the new technology. The, the Strider killing mission in particular was just spectacular. Very cool mission design. Words. Thanks for a happy 2024. So the odds that we transform next turn are actually pretty low. We got to play the Bash a bit to even try. We might as well play Metallicize, but I think most of Lee we're going to be blocking here. Yeah. Block, block, blocking away. I'm okay taking the Blanc to the face here. That's fine. We get Dark Embrace in play. That's pretty good. Ow. Hey, we got Double Tap Immolate. Or Double Tap Carnage, which is probably what I'm going to do here. Want two burns, thank you. No strikes for me. So we're having lots of block is a very good. Easy game. to lose Carnage. That's fine. I'll also lose this Defend. Take 
three more. Now I can double tap him late and feel good about it. Boom. Maybe that was actually better to strike him late. Oh well. All good. The Blockination. We have a fairy in case things go truly awry as well. Always a possibility. But our block is so consistent that I'm not too worried here. And the Thorns Potion chipping in additional damage where needed is also very helpful. We might die here, though, to this hit. We good, we good. This just kills you. All right, good fight. Kept the fairy, very importantly. Scored lots of money, scored a block potion. We have five relics out of Act 1, and we didn't even use the shovel yet. Actually, yes, we did. Excuse me. Do we take a fiend fire or a reaper or a bludgeon? Dark Embrace, to me, says take the fiend fire, exhaust your whole hand, and then play double tap Flash of Steel a whole bunch. Dragonoth with two metric years. Happy New Year to you. Sorry, three metric years. Vanish Radish says, do I find my risk assessment changes well in a streak? Yes. Yeah, I do become more risk averse with a larger and larger streak. It becomes pretty stressful. And I do think that that does cause me to lose runs that I wouldn't have won otherwise. Although I don't have any way of knowing which runs. I'll take a Fiend Fire. And we're offered Ectoplasm, Mark of Pain, Pandora's Box. My. So Ectoplasm and Mark of Pain are energy generators. Ecto says we can no longer gain gold. Mark of Pain says add wounds to the draw pile sort of combat. We have a couple ways to deal with those, actually. It's not the worst Mark of Pain. But there's also the Pandora's Box. Get rid of all of our strikes and defends and turn them into other random ironclad cards. This one's definitely high risk, high reward. This could go really well by giving us an offering or a corruption, or it could just be a bunch of garbage, and then we don't even have our four defends anymore. Um, or as many targets for second win, which could really be a downside. That said, um, there's going to really be a downside to either Ectoplasm or Mark of Pain, so I'm definitely considering the Pandora's box. Scart with the eight months of support. Oops, all war cries. Not the worst thing we could get, by, mind you, but not by a long stretch. Oops, all wild strikes would be the sort of thing that would really mess with us here. Ray Del Bono, thanks for the prime sub in the 51 months. Really shouldn't say things like this before I click on the box. Yeah, not the worst, worst Mark of Pain, honestly. I'd probably, probably take Mark of Pain over Ectoplasm just very slightly here. Um, because of Dark Embrace, double second win. We, we can get rid of those statuses pretty quickly. But Pandora's box with nine transforms here could be, could be something. What's in the box? Reaper's in the box, a third second wind. A dual wield and Evolve, Evolve is here. And a ghostly armor. Overall, not bad. We did get some trash attacks, but we got fewer attacks than the strikes we had, right? This is, this is basically the way I look at it. Or actually, we got the same number. One, two, three, no, just four attacks. We used to have five attacks, five strikes. Now we have four, uh, of which several are better here. Reaper is way better. Clash is probably not a thing. Blood for Blood could save the day. Dual Wield might do fun stuff, especially with Reaper here. Dual Wield Reaper is very powerful. Problem is, how do you pay for all these cards? We don't have energy for this nonsense. What am I going to do about that? No clue. Ooh, these shop placements are awkward. Shop here, here, and here. <laughs> Elites and shops are uh, paired with one another. Schwarz's Zeichen, thanks for another 20 gifted subs today. Holy moly, thank you. Ear Payment. 
Sir Schwartz. There was 20 gift subs in the box, is what there was. Heck yeah. And taller than the average bear with a gifted sub as well, thank you. Hmm. And if you go to the shop, you have to go to the shop too. I guess I'm only going to go through one shop here. We'll take on this elite, maybe. And we can opt out if we are too weak. How about rest sites? Is there a, an abundance of those? No, there's this paucity of them. There's definitely not enough rest sites. That is disappointing news. So we'll consider two events on the way to the shop. Okay, we'll start here. We'll start here. All right, well, at the bare minimum, this is a great fight for Metella size. It's also a great fight for block potion, apparently. Could have dual wielded the clash, maybe that would have been better. But I wanted to full block. Pretty happy with the full block here. Take a little bit. Draw lots of cards. Absolutely perfect. Get him. That was a good fight. We prevented basically all of the damage. I'm pretty happy with a Battle Trance. Battle Trance stops us from drawing further cards, which can be an issue for the Dark Embrace. But it's helpful for finding the Dark Embrace in the first place. So I'm going to grab it here. Once we no longer want it, we can get rid of it. Short term, definitely useful. Ooh, do I play the Shockwave? Probably. That means not playing Clash. Still worth it. B2 coming soon. Thanks for the eight months. Happy New Year. Hmm. I guess I'll double tap Flash of Steel. I don't love this. Bummer. Ow. On my face. Um, what do we do here? Dark Embrace, Metallicize, or Feet and Fire? Really want to be able to kill the front one with Reaper. I'm just going to Feet and Fire this guy then. Let's see if we can heal some of this back. Of course, he went for the attack, huh? That's fine. Get back 12 health here. Kill the front guy. War cry. Put the emulate on top. This doesn't kill you, right? It's fine. Do another turn or two to kill this fool. Hopefully we can get him. He does block for 17 here. But double tap, uh, blood for blood, does the trick. We actually leave the fight with 66 health. Feels pretty good. Get all our money back. We're offered Rupture Plus, Headbutt Plus. That's interesting. We're a little bit light on attack, so I do like this Headbutt for helping us control what's on top of the deck. Useful along with Warcry. Can set up Clash a lot. Great with Battle Trance. Great with Flash of Steel. There's quite a few options. Shelly Pemba, thanks for nine months. No, Aranton Lad, I haven't done a, a lot of philosophical reading. But I can see why you might uh, suspect that. Does Rupture synergize with pain? It sure does. We've had some really cool runs. 
involving the two of those. I wish we had any self-harm here to justify a Rupture Plus pick alongside this Reaper, but we don't at the moment. Someone was asking what our first remove is. Uh, I think it's going to be Perfected Strike, as this card does basically no damage for two energy. And I can't use the other cards to delete it. Let's see, we're missing a potion. I might want to go two more combats. These are hard pool fights. No, let's take an event. Another card remove. Perfect. We have no strikes or defends to remove, or to upgrade, rather. So this is another easy remove. What do we remove next? Clash? Do we lose Clash? Ash could also go. Yuki with a prime sub. Thanks for two months. And a dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Buy Magic Fish. What is the Ironclad's favorite 80s metal band? Metallica's eyes. That is all. Let's remove, uh... Let's remove that bash. Headbutt showing its worth here, and we can headbutt the Battle Trance. And this is a good fight for Dark Embrace, or Evolve, really. But definitely Dark Embrace. If you just want a second win, then. True Great, rather. Let's get rid of this. I can put Headbutt on top if I want. Let's do that as well. Hmm. Get some questionable choices here. Quick, play the clash. Bummer. So close. Perfect. Okay, evolve plus dark embrace turns the hex that Chosen gives us into a draw engine. And then we can just use Second Wind to block endlessly. That's what I call good stuff. And then we can just Fiend Fire, right? Except we need more cards to Fiend Fire. I can't just Fiend Fire. Because then we'll have nothing left. Hmm. This is a slight dilemma. But wait, I can use unlimited True Grits, right? I can do True Grit Clash, which draws Dazed and True Grit. Then True Grit Dazed. Flash of Steel draws the Dazed, which draws the True Grit, or the Flash of Steel. OP. I like it. All right, but how do I turn this into a W for us? So not actually infinite, because I do have to lose a card at the start of each turn. Hmm. Concerning. Oh yeah, I can make my own burns, I guess. Do something similar with that, huh? The Flash of Steel draw itself. No. Cards don't go to the discard pile until they've finished resolving their effects, which prevents one card infinites from being a thing, generally, in Slay the Spire. We would need a second copy of Flash of Steel to do the thing. So I'll lose this. Headbutt.
Get attacked big time by the Chosen again next turn, though. Hmm. Bird, you gotta die. Curses. Can't believe the bird never took a turn off. Ah. Um, maybe we can get four Flash of Seals this turn. Let's try this. Lose Fiend Fire, because it's suicide to play it now. Yeah, so 50-50 chance we get it. Damn it. Ah! Bummer. Getting hosed at every possible opportunity here in this fight. Please stop attacking me. For the love of heck. The Chosen also hasn't taken a turn off here. Merciless. How do I make this work? We don't have many cards left. I have to play the Immolate now. That's, I believe, the answer here. And now I have to delete second wind? Even worse. This is terrible. Now we either get it or we don't. And we don't is the answer every single time. Frick. This has gone so badly. This should have been a free fight. I must have misplayed this. I must have misplayed this. I, f I feel like there's no other answer here is that I've done something terribly wrong. And screwed this up royally. Our New Year's resolution is to always attack. Get him. And once again, we're taking a bunch of damage here, unfortunately. Big yikes. Good thing is we get a lot of health from resting. Bad news is there's an elite next floor. We might actually just straight die to that elite. Although the liquid memories will make it very difficult. The burn go did the bird go from 2x6 to 3x6 without a buff turn in between? Yeah, because the Chosen made us vulnerable, is what happened there. Not ah, crud. Oh boy. Well, at least blood for blood will be cheap. Headbutt the Shrug? Looks like that's what it has to be. No sign of Dark Embrace yet. Let me double tap Carnage. Okay, Shockwave at the bottom here. Want to go Shockwave for sure. This could be a Liquid Memories second win sort of moment. That would preserve the fairy for the m for now. We block for exactly... Well, we block for 30, actually. Although playing the Evolve is definitely tempting. We can't just let this thing stab us. Here's hoping, I guess. Oh, I could have played the Evolve in addition. I'm a fool. Definitely a fool. You want a headbutt Flash of Steel? Yes. I think so. Looks like we're gonna die. At least the first time here. That's what fairies are for. This is still not a kill. That's bad. Bummer. Uh, might as well play Reaper? 
No, we're not full next turn. All right, well, that sucked thoroughly. However, we are alive. We have a turnip and a distilled chaos and a feel no pain. And I think these things do help somewhat. We also get to go to a shop and we can rest if we want to before having to fight another elite. So I've had worse, I suppose. Spit a lot. Thanks for the three months. Happy New Year to you, too. Buying potions seems like a great idea with Toy Ornithopter. Buying relics also seems pretty good. Toolbox gives us one more card on turn one, which could be quite helpful. I didn't hear no bell. That's right. I did not. War paint could be quite useful as it upgrades a couple random skills. We're not sure what it'll upgrade, but anything could be useful. That's for sure. That said, I think the toolbox with its chance of apotheosis and other benefits is even better here. So I'll take the toolbox. No remove for us. And I want to go this way because I want to rest at the first opportunity. Any fight could kill us. Thanks, buddy. Hmm. Fry mine blast, but I don't think any of those are really going to do anything. We want to use one of our potions. I guess yeeting three cards is probably our best bet here. Let's just do it. That's pretty good. I accept that outcome quite happily. Okay. Then we can rest. So we'll have lots of health for the elite. We're also going to have the bronze scales, giving us three thorns, three damage back when attacked. Currently still surviving. Not thriving, but surviving. Thank you, Regal Pillow. And next we face the Gremlin Leader. It's either Impatience or Deep Breath here. I like Deep Breath so that we can get Immolate back into our hand repeatedly. Hello? Or I could just Second Wind it for block on turn one. Yeah, just, just playing Second Wind is a full block here. I guess I'll do that. Deal some damage with the scales. Get two draws to kill these minions again. Actually, only one, really. Oh, yeah, and I'm not even made frail. Okay, that's a lot better than I thought. Not even made frail. That's pretty cool. Clash does not even kill these nerds. Devastating. We might want to attack Potion now. See if we can find a way to kill both of them. Let's do that. Excellent. All right, good talk. Gonna put Immolate on top. As tempting as it is to put Reaper on top, we want to put Immolate on top here. And then I can play Shockwave Feel No Pain this turn. Am 
I allowed to play Reaper? My Reaper Headbutt, we deal 24 damage. Immolate will kill. I think we can get away with that. It seems reasonable. Although I don't have the thingy in play, the Dark Embrace. That was not as reasonable as I thought. There we are. Okay, that certainly could have gone worse. We're now at almost full health. We've got a bag of preparation. We got a strength potion. And we get a burning pact, all of which I really like here. Yoink. Another way to exhaust cards of our choosing is always going to be strong. Although we're still missing a bit of energy. This is starting to go our way here. Blind you, I guess. I really want to deal damage to these two pretty quickly. It can be real pains in the butt otherwise. Maybe that means I want a fiend fire. Now let's go dark embrace for the moment. buff strength, and she might attack on this turn. No, thankfully not. Now we can deal enough damage with Headbutt. Don't have Dark Embrace down? Yes, I do. Okay. Here we go. Missile Force Mystic to start healing now, and we can put on the offensive pressure, finally. Eventually. Hello. I don't need to headbutt this battle trance. Whoops, I should have played that. That was the whole point. What am I doing here? Deeply unclear. Deeply, deeply unclear. There we go. Well, that'll do him in. Right? Surely. Good enough. Double Clash, the power. Okay, once again, almost full health, close enough. Get offered an upgraded Pummel Strike, which draws two cards. That's pretty cool as well. I'm gonna grab that. Best ironclad streaks in starting the grind? Uh, yeah, I think 10 is our best. Ooh, seven block for zero. Hand agreed in this fight is really valuable, though. I'm gonna take the hand agreed here. Yeah, exactly, because we can double tap hand agreed. This would be a cool, if we were a lower health, strength potion, double tap reaper would certainly be a thing. Sadly, even with the Strength Potion, Double Tap Hand Agreed will not KO any of these fools. It might be better to do something like Ghostly Armor Shockwave, since we have Immolate coming up. Let's do Shockwave. 11 has got to be more than 3 per turn, surely. How long do I step back to the Grand Mastery Challenge to take? Cross the four characters? Surely at least one year. Long time. Oh, heck. This really doesn't kill either the front or the back guy. That's fine. I've got second wind. Hit me. I'll take this.
Thanks for the money, nerds. And a mall bank, too. 12 gold per floor. And another seeing red, which is a, a net gain of energy. I, with all the card draw this deck has, I really like these seeing reds quite a lot. And yes, sure, surely if we manage to get the other three characters, Watcher will feel like a victory lap. Part of the reason to leave her for last. We want Demon Form for scaling. Good question. I don't think we need Demon Form for scaling as long as we play our boss fight intelligently. We have plenty of scaling through our exhaust mechanics here. Should be able to do some nonsense like Dual Wield Clash or Dual Wield Flash of Steel. Oh yeah, we can just go infinite with Dual Wield Flash of Steel, right? I have scaling. We just go infinite. Easy game. Uh, let's take an event then. And look for corruption or something. Ooh, Sentinel's looking pretty good, actually. We're, we're definitely the sort of deck that wants a Sentinel. Had we not taken the Act 1 Dark of Race, this would be the first one we see. I think I'd take a Sentinel here. This deck is very energy hungry, has access to lots of exhaust, so gain energy on exhaust should speed us up. Dragon House, thanks for 27 months of support. All right, I'm going to upgrade um, Dark Embrace. This card's too expensive. Yoink. Off to Will Flash of Steel on turn one. Can it really be? Can it really be? A well, secret technique for Burning Pact. Use that on the Sentinel here. Speed us up a bit. Play Shockwave? I have a waste. Don't want to lose it, though. Right now, the goal is just to exhaust cards, pretty much. We're doing that quite well already. We just want to get down to the two Flash of Steels that we have. Break my wind here. Wait, you're going to steal my Dark Embrace, aren't you? Okay, good. They didn't. Happy New Year, Robson. Happy New Year. Okay, we don't need dual wield again, although it would be vaguely appreciated, I suppose. Just lose Reaper. Get full health here. All right, this is progressing really well. In fact, I don't think we want to kill either orb because they've removed cards that I don't even want anyway. Could be the slowest infinite ever, by the way. That's enough, right? We're now there. We sure are. So all I have to do is play Flash of Steel another 80 times. And this right here is why we took Flash of Steel over Swift Strike on floor one. We talked about this possibility being a thing, that the ability to, with two or more Flash of Steels, create a, essentially an infinite loop here. Again, you do need two of them for this to actually work, because a card cannot draw itself, typically. Strength Potion's a big time save here, right? 
Now, obviously, we can't do this against uh, Time Eater or Heart. Or can we? Some money and an offering. No, an exhume, a double tap, or a demon form. Exhume can get back any exhausted card. If we upgraded one of the seeing reds, that would make it worth it. Currently, exhume does not help. Would we consider rage to let us go infinite against the heart? Yeah, we would consider it. We would consider it. I'm going to skip these. Fiendfire exhume is also a possibility. Deck is so energy hungry right now. I'm skipping. Oh no. <laughs> Sozu. Or Empty Cage. I think it has to be Sozu here. Obviously, we can't rely on Velvet Choker here. We get more energy, but then we're limited to six cards per turn. That would be a problem, let's say. But we can take Sozu. No more potions is pretty bad, especially when we're healing off the potions. But that additional energy is a big deal. So I'll take it. I'll take it. And then we'd like a slightly later shop if possible. Oh yeah, we can do this shop if we want to. Ooh, and I can take lots of events to start. Is that wise? We can no longer get potions from combats. So, yes? Question mark? Not sure. All right, then I'll take block. Already way happier with four energy. Yeah, much happier. Much, much happier here. Might be able to double tap him late next turn. Yep. I sure can. Got him. Okay, we leave that fight at full health. We pick up another thunder. Ah, thunder? Another pommel strike plus if we desire it. There's also body slam, which can do a ton of damage in a deck like this. Who's our next boss? Fighting Time Eater first. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to take this Body Slam. I think that's a pretty cool Body Slam. Secret Molten Egg was pretty handy. Kill this fool. But I can heal the fool. That's good. Sort of regretting not taking that spot weakness back in Act One. Sort of. 
gambling chip, huh? Gambling chip bag of preparation is actually insane. So we can discard any number of cards on turn one of the seven that we draw. And then draw that many. That's well worth breaking the Maw Bank for. That's very good. Dr. Tracy, thanks for 17 months. Herbie says, how highly do I rate Body Slam? Very good in Act 3 and beyond. Not that good up to Act 3. But the later you get into the run, the better it is, usually. Let's lose this Clash now that we have the Body Slam. Sorry, Clash. Ooh, Panacea versus the Spire Growth. That's great. Uh, battle Trance first. So we block the Constrict here. Which is quite good. So much card draw. You'd love to see it. Once we're able to generate lots of block on our turn, thanks to the feel no pain and such, we can have a much better time with Body Slam. Eighty-seven damage body slam there. Excellence. Trench is a little tempting. We don't have a uh, barricade though, or anything like that. Flex plus is also a little bit tempting, but only a little bit. This deck really wants a power through still. So rest site or elite? We could simply dig for a relic at a rest site, but if we fight the elite, we can get money and a card ward and still get a relic say we should fight the elite. I don't think we're going to take that much of a threat from elites because of our ridiculously powerful turn one. We can even gamble the um, toolbox card, by the way, so we can actually gamble up to eight here, which is truly absurd. Truly absurd. We drew every card in the deck on turn one. Fun fact. Let's do a wield on Flash of Steel. Dog with the three months of support. What am I looking for when buying toolbox? It's really just about having one more card on turn one, really. And you get to look at what the enemy is doing before you choose that card, which is also really valuable. It's getting bigger. So it, sometimes it generates stuff like apotheosis. Um, other times you want the bomb for certain fights. Um, sometimes it's just a block card on turn one. There's a lot of different options. Another upgraded True Grit seems pretty good. Don't need a Fire Breathing with this deck. Let's take the True Grit. Oh. Um, let's lose the True Grit. Never mind. Good, good talk. 
Arc Shackle's tempting. Deep Breath is Peace of an Infinite. Let's grab that, actually. Very good turn one. Ludicrously good turn one. Wanna go body slim. But kill this nerd as well. Okay, Immolate is in the draw pile, should be easy to get to as well. Perfect. Okay, losing the chance to dual wield Flash of Steel in this fight? I am. We don't need to infinite to win this fight. Excuse you, lady. Dying over here. Come on. It'll be like that. Guess so. Next turn. Okay, you're toast. At least you will be if you stop attacking me. Come on. flower that's going to help with the energy situation get some money and we get to choose an offering yeah so this was much better than resting at a rest site for example just like the last elite much much better any general deck building tips for ironclad find yourself getting combo pieces but not getting real co cohesion going you do have to pick and choose your combo pieces you just can't grab every single one usually for more successful comboing, you really want to limit the number of attacks you have in your deck as clad. The fewer attacks, really the better. Uh, and a really good combo-centric deck on clad can have only three or four attacks in a 30-card deck, because the rest of the deck will be dedicated to generating block, drawing cards, and setting up powers for them to make the attacks super strong. Um, when in doubt, use your exhaust cards to get rid of attacks or other cards that are not useful in the current combat so that you can sort of scale mid-fight. Ha, wish I could take this Toxic Egg, but we gotta take the blue key instead. Bit late for the Toxic Egg anyway, so I can't say I'm too sad about that. There's lots of good upgrades in this deck. Upgrading Seeing Red, upgrading Feel No Pain, upgrading Dual Wield are all pretty powerful. We can also just dig. What the hey, let's dig one. Preserved Insect, making elites easier to kill. Well, that's good timing at least. I'll take it. I will take it. Quite happily, I will take it. What's in here? Free flame barrier, I like. Um, actually, yeah, we can go infinite in this fight if we want to. Even with the added burns from Nemesis, we're not afraid, because we have Evolve. We do get 45, though. Or do we? No, 
we don't. We get a magic flower, making healing more effective during combat. That means we heal nine from burning blood. We'll heal eight when we drink this strength potion in the heart fight. Um, and we heal more from Reaper, too, which is kind of cool, I guess. I negotiate with terrorists. Thanks for 38 months of sub portage. Closing in on four metric years. Holy heck. And if I didn't get you um, sneaky skills, thanks for nine months. Would I take Mark of the Bloom here? I don't think so, especially not with Magic Flower now. I don't think so. Do 30 twice and get money from one of these nerds. Perfect. Another reason, uh, another benefit of Toolbox, by the way, sometimes generating the Hand of Greed card can be quite a lot of additional money, actually. It's a surprising amount. Was that too much block? That was totally too much block. For example, we got 60 paying for much of the purchase price of the Toolbox just from this one fight. It's pretty cool. Would upgrade it evolve? Do we need that? Not really, right? Well, I'm gonna take it. Fighting time eater, we're fighting heart, we're fighting shield and spear. These are all really good reasons to have another evolve. Our uh, burning elite is Reptomancer, except it's easier than the last Reptomancer because we got preserved insect and then, and then more max health, which ended up just being less health, I guess. So that kind of worked out. That's cool. That's fun. I think you should keep Carnage, because it kills one. Keep Carnage here. Um... Guess I'll take that back. Not sure about that, actually. This looks bad. Reaper kills the front one. Probably want to keep the Reaper so I can heal back, though. Yeah, we do. This is bad. Ouch. was the actual bottom card. That's okay. Oh, it's body slamming time. Bonk. Now it's reaper time. Maybe. I could double tap emulate and just win. Tempting. Try something else, though. Here's Reaper. Already full blocking. Feel for 21 off that Reaper. That's exciting. 
Okay, finish her off next turn. Potion Bell. Excellent. <laughs> Put my face, though. Hey there, Rakana. That's a lot of waffles. We still needed an infinite combo piece. We could take Dropkick here. Slowest Mobius, thanks for 11 months of support. Alright, we get to the shop with 200 bucks. Take a third evolve. The Blood Potion. Meal ticket would heal us in Act 4 for whatever that's worth. Not much, I don't think. Only afford one remove, so I might as well wait until we see the next shop. Ideally, I'd like to buy Abacus or something similar. And a dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Netress. What do you call... A keepsake from a cobbler. A souvenir. That is all to a shot. Let's recall. No refunds. Excuse you. Well, I could take second Flash of Steel and just have the um, the infinite, except it's Time Eater, so infinite's not really a thing we're doing. No, it is not. Actually, not sure how I'm winning this fight. But I know it involves Evolve. We're gonna go True Grit. Second Wind here delete all this stuff. I'm going to consider the Strength Potion here, actually. The Reaper Immolate. Immolate's going to be a big piece of how we win this. This is my next... Actually, that's a good, good hand next turn. Oh yeah, we can also use Body Slam. Body Slam will do really good stuff here. Um, so give me what? Burning Pact? Honestly, just give me a status card for next turn. Slimed is great. Could shrug into drawing this stuff right now. I want it next turn, unironically. When we need the block. Perfect. Okay, get rid of Flash of Steel, because it's a liability in this fight. And then we can go dual wield, body slam, body slam. Take a little bit here. No more Vuln. We're out of Vuln for the whole rest of the fight. And weakened too, unfortunately. Bit spooky. Can I do this without Immolate? I don't want to find out. Don't need dual wield anymore, I don't think. some more burns. 
also like to play five cards this turn if possible. So I'll play... I think I need to keep the true grid. Now we can second wind. So we can do body slam, body slam, pummel strike, draw both body slams, double tap, body slam, body slam, body slam. He did. GG. GG, nerd. Next up, the Awakened One. How's it going, Simon Oyoi? Oh, wait. Let me try that again. Simon Yo. There we go. Simon Yo says, Found Slay the Spire from your YouTube. Got it, and I'm really enjoying it. Thank you, Mr. Streamer. You're welcome. Just play Body Slam 20 times easy. Let's try an enlightenment here. Just do it. Okay, in this fight, we can just go infinite in. Easy peasy. No problem. Probably don't want to play too many powers, as the Awakened One will get stronger for every power we play. Spooky, right? So, uh, I won't play the Unupgraded Evolve, for example. Do we have dual wield here? Do we just want to dual wield Flash of Steel now? Seems like the easiest thing to do. Won't take too long, though. Hmm. Just play Second Wind. Pretty sure I need this dual wield. Okay, so headbutt. It's at minimum headbutt the flash steel, get another one. Now we can play second wind. Slam. That's okay. Pretty spicy turn one. Got rid of 16 cards on turn one. I believe that would traditionally be considered good. Evolve though. Eh, good enough. Good enough. Now we simply play Flash of Steel 100 times. Torak Fremen, thanks for the five months on the Prime sub. Any yearly challenge plan for the Spire? The goal is to get a 20 streak with each of the four characters independently. With first up to bat being the Ironclad. Can we get 20 consecutive Ascension 20 heart Ironclad wins is the question. I think yes, but it's only a matter of how long it will take. 
Need a Rage or an Abacus for this to beat Heart? Yes, we would. We might not use this to beat Heart. That's the short answer there. We might do something else, just like we did for Time Eater. We can use Body Slam. Well, the Heart doesn't continually add statuses, is my problem. We really want something like a Reckless Charge or a Power Through. Could I do a 20 streak on Ascension Zero first try? No problem. Likely. Yeah, very likely. I wouldn't say I have a 100% win rate on Ascension Zero, as evidenced by the fact that I have lost Ascension Zero runs on stream before, but I think it's pretty likely. Sometimes the lower ascension can mess up how you do a fight because the patterns are different, like Gremlin Ob, for example, can go worse on lower ascension because of the randomness, but usually the other l low ascension benefits make up for that. So I'd still say it's a much easier overall. So close. That's over in a flash. GG. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source? This evil. You ready your steel? Dealing 2359 damage. Have I been here before? One last use of a fire. We can upgrade here, which could make a difference. I like the Feel No Pain upgrade in particular. Getting one of the second wins is also vaguely tempting. Let's do Feel No Pain. And then buy another Feel No Pain. We could buy Orange Pellets if we play a Power Attack and Skill on the same turn. We can remove all of our debuffs. This could allow us to remove weak and vulnerable from the heart. Um, realistically, the best things here are Gambler's Brew Power Potion, except uh, I'm not allowed to buy them, so we have to do other stuff. Boot any good here with Flash of Steel? It's kind of hilarious, actually. It does substantially improve the damage of Flash of Steel. And I, oh, the chat, a dad joke, once again, I can do that. I think I can. What do you call a good dad joke? An oxymoron. It's not, not untrue. When does a joke become a dad joke? When the punchline becomes apparent. One of my favorites. I think I will take orange pellets, although I don't love it here. We have enough powers that we're very likely to remove Voln against Heart. I guess I'll do it. Not in love with that, though. X-Track with the 21 months, the full year. I want to Apotheosis. I'm not sure I'm allowed to. I think it's better to Secret Technique the Offering here. We got Evolve turn one, meaning we're going to draw lots of cards on turn two. That's excellent news. We also just want to try to block this however, however we can. Tapping Immolate would deal a lot of damage towards these two. I think that's probably a good idea. Double tap Immolate, and then second wind. Full block? Is that a full block? We block for six times one, two, three. That's not even close. Cute. Maybe True Grit, second wind, 
single immolate? Hmm. Can I kill the Spire Shields? Yeah, we've got five energy, so I can actually do a bit more. Stone Road Stark with 53 months. Okay, the Ghost of Chair passed. Look upon you all favor favorably. Let's see, double tap immolate deals 56. This would make it 76. It's not a kill. Reaper's in my hand. Hmm. Think in true grit, then double tap immolate, then second wind. That sounds right. Or we can double tap him with him late first. That's fine too. But the carnage doesn't get double tap because that wasn't an upgraded double tap, unfortunately. Bean fire could kill maybe. Would kill, yes. One, two, three, four, five, six times seven is forty-two. Let me just take the twelve. By true gets second win, we're gonna block for twenty-two. So we would take eight. But then the shield is still alive. Killing the shield is very convenient. I will allow it. Yeah, eight because of uh Tori. We take one plus uh, sorry, seven. One plus six. Eight, uh, seven damage. Math is hard. Math is indeed hard. All skills. Always has been. Flower on two, no time like the present, yeah? Get him. Get a blood vial that heals us for three at the start of the heart fight. Excellent. We want a fourth evolve or third evolve? I don't think so. But we're pretty happy with what we have going into the heart fight. We have decent odds here. Three. Rip is good. We don't have consistent vulnerable in this fight. Take a trip. That headbutt? Keep the headbutt. I'm gonna go skill. 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 We have Dark Embrace in play already. We want to do this. Let's rank it to Fiend Fire, maybe? We should consider drinking the Strength Potion now, too. We don't get the full heal. We only heal for six here out of eight possible, but that's probably fine. Before I play any attacks here. I want any of these cards back. I guess Ghostly is okay. Really want to get powers down? We really want to get a ball down. So I prefer to keep drawing if possible. Let's do Pummel Strike. We don't get to draw immediately if I do that. Now we have to Body Slam first. Then we can Pummel Strike. Okay, there's Feel No Pain. Feel no pain, second win, draw a bunch. I'll draw two. And then we can do Metallicize and Headbutt. I like the idea of Headbutting Battle Trance. Now let's Headbutt Pummel Strike, so we have an attack that draws cards. And then we can use that to activate Orange Pellets. Getting all the powers down is pretty important here.
Deaner, deaner. I'm not frail. Perfect. We got a power, attack, and skill in the hand. So let's start with skill. Attack? No, power next, because I want to remove... I want to be able to draw if I hit a status card. Off the pummel strike. So, debuffs are gone. Let's lose this carnage. Perfect. Evolve. That looks great for next turn. I don't necessarily want to get rid of the statuses yet. Because they are lots of card draw. Might just end turn here. Sure. I think I'm going to do that. We want these statuses to make a good body slam turn. We have Tori to protect us here. So this is only 1 by 15. It's fine. This will block for 11. Perfect timing on Shockwave. Next turn, it gets um, Artifact and stuff. A pretty good hand to Fiendfire. But we lose a lot of statuses, as mentioned. A pretty good hand to Fiendfire. Could dual wield something first if I wanted to. Eh. Blood for blood being free is good as well. Don't love this hand, but, uh,. You gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. Definitely need to make some more statuses now. To do damage as quickly as possible as well. Yeah, we got the big hit first, that's good because next turn, Tori will protect us again, and then I think we can kill before anything untowards happens here. Uh, that means we don't need Trip anymore. Uh, although, let's headbutt the Blood for Blood. No. Ouch. Old blood for blood, putting in really big work here. <laughs> Neat. And again, the Tori protects us from death here. Otherwise, we would be straight dead if it weren't for this relic. All a GG, but not for me. Bang. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to follow on Twitch to watch the content live. Click the link in the description below.